This is Delphi's autonomous driving car. This is a prototype, but they want to get it into production by 2019. And isn't this the future we all want? Get in the car, sit here, and then do all the other things. On my way. Come ownership is down. Go, Vizudo! You need to be a safety driver to actually sit back here while it's moving, but we can pretend. The thing is, every traffic model of a self-driving roadway future co-signs the idea that roadways would be safer with fewer accidents if humans have less to do with the chore of driving. Basically, we make dumb mistakes, and the promise is machines don't. Another alleged value of self-driving cars is supposed to be productivity, but a recent study from the University of Michigan showed most folks at 62% said it would not help them accomplish more. That has to do with both motion sickness and not quite trusting the tech. And we should care about Michigan's research into this issue. One, because duh, Detroit. But two, because that university has the world's largest closed track for testing these cars called M-City. The self-driving car from Delphi will be more of a robo-taxi than something consumers can buy. But within the autonomous car race, it's one of many. And that is why we're here at CES delving into our future self-driving cars. The first real dream machine was called a horseless carriage and debuted in 1886. But it wasn't until Henry Ford figured out how to rapidly assemble cars and make them cheap that they really took off. Now, many modern teenagers view getting a secondhand car as a rite of passage. New car jump and all, but probably not if you have to share. Get this, the idea of cars autonomously getting people to their destination was floated as early as the 1920s. But it wasn't until the 80s with Carnegie Mellon's NavLab vehicles that people started thinking it could really be done. Now we're in a full-on self-driving car race to the finish with dang near everyone designing and testing their own versions. Would you recommend wearing a seatbelt? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the law. <laughs> okay. How safe is this robot? <laughs> I love this. So all the sensors are showing all the people around. So right here, there's a yield sign. So they need to have 360 degree range of knowing there's traffic coming, but there's a yield sign so they can kind of go whenever there's a free space. This is tricky. And we'll see how she does. Like nothing, like not even an issue. I didn't think I would feel so comfortable with an autonomous software system driving, but I do. It's fair to say most people are watching Tesla, maybe the closest of them all, since Elon Musk says the hardware will be capable of full autonomy. Once the tech gets smart enough, he intends for people to just upgrade with an over-the-air update. But don't count out General Motors, Mercedes, semi-truck company Auto, and basically every big car company. But that's just the established car companies. So you know tech has something to say about that too. Apple is working on self-driving cars, but also just reportedly laid a bunch of employees on the project off. And Google announced in December that it's breaking out its self-driving arm into a company called Waymo, which is already being tested in about 60 vehicles on public roads now, and is teaming with Chrysler on these minivans. Dead vans for the win. Even Uber and Lyft are doing real-world self-driving tests in certain cities like San Francisco, although the legality of that is kind of controversial. At CES, established car companies are working hard to convince press and consumers that they're the old hands you want on the self-driving wheel. Like Ford, for example, which says consumers will be able to buy its fully autonomous cars by 2021. You know, when we first introduced things like uh, anti-lock brakes and airbags, there was naturally some apprehension about, you know, I don't want a computer deciding how to pump the brake pedals on the car for me or, you know, blow up an airbag in my face when I'm driving. But as soon as the data actually came back and showed that, you know, the safety benefits and the, you know, driver convenience benefits were enormous, everyone wanted them. So, it's you know, natural for people to be skeptical at first, but I haven't found anybody yet 
who's gotten in our self-driving car and hasn't loved it. Since some would argue that the crux of self-driving cars is a software problem, you should also know about an entirely different approach. So the idea is basically this. Come AI's goal is to be the android of self-driving cars. George Hotz is retrofitting existing cars with this 3D printed sensor box and software. His company, Kama AI, was all set to ship out its assistive driving setup when he got a sternly written warning about safety from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. That's when he put the plan up for free on GitHub. I mean, self-driving cars are probably the greatest computer science challenge of this decade. And when you think, is a company like Ford or General Motors gonna solve it? No way. Is a company like Google or Uber gonna solve it? Or Apple? Put a lot more chips there. All the best companies, Apple, Google, Hewlett Packard, even Aviato, all of them were started in unzoned garages. He's got interesting ideas and the Ehrlich Bachman like character to go with it. Still, self driving cars aren't going to solve everything, at least according to Henry Ford's great grandson. We are going to build smart cars, but we also need to build smart roads, smart parking smart public tran transportation systems, and more. That actual communication with each other while driving down the road, regardless of whatever brand loyalty you have, is seen as the next big challenge in self-driving cars, along with the cars being able to communicate with infrastructure. Much like the race to pick a music standard among CDs, record players, or even 8-track, Car manufacturers need to get it together and have a conversation real soon about how to maintain safety while cars are cruising down the road. Like an electronic and refined, no you go ahead, no you. One standard needs to happen in just about every area of AI, but cars more than anything, since our very lives are at stake. The company that masses that first will be in my very own personal winner's circle. Thanks, little guy.